Laura Ray, and today we're going to do a wear test on some new makeup, some makeup that's been around for a while, and one product that's making a comeback. Let's start first with prepping the skin. We all know that's so important. Our makeup won't lay right if we don't have the right prep. Today I'm using the Great Skin Glow Serum from Merit. I purchased this recently. It is so thin, it sinks in the skin very quickly. I'm really loving it. It's got some great skincare loving ingredients and it plays well under my makeup. Merit just sent me this. It's their Great Skin Priming Moisturizer. I love the feel of this. It is definitely cosmetically elegant. It sinks in the skin quickly. We're going to see today if it plays well under my makeup. I believe it will. I only needed a drop or two, very little. And so I'm going to be testing this out this month and getting back to you with more feedback. But for this experience here, I felt it worked beautifully. Now we're going in with sunscreen. I'm loving the Cetaphil 50, even though it has a little bit of a white cast to this. It is a mineral sunscreen, which I like. It's water resistant up to 80 minutes. And the main thing I love it for, it's made for sensitive skin. I have very reactive sensitive skin. I can barely use any of the sunscreens on the market and this works really well and it's affordable. Today we're testing out some of the makeup from Pretty Smart. This is a line now that's over at Walmart. I have been using some of their other products for over a month and I'll be telling you about those over the next few weeks. But I've been very impressed with this line. The products are around the $10 point or lower. This one was around $7. It's their eyeshadow primer. Now what I can say about this is you're not going to get coverage as far as any discoloration on the lids, but it was super thin, which I think makes it great for mature skin. So if it holds on to the shadows today, then I think we have a winner. Merit also came out with a brow pencil recently that I purchased. It's called the Brow 1990. I really am enjoying this because it's got a super fine point, which I need. I don't have super thin brows, but they're definitely not thick. And I do draw in some hair to make my brows thicker. But I think this is very natural looking, which is what I'm looking for. I want my brows when someone's up close to me to look like my brows. I've seen people where they get up close and I can see a whole line and drawn in sections and it doesn't look natural. So I want when people are close to me for them to just think I have a fuller brow and not see it drawn in but I really love this pencil. It's a little bit creamy, which I like. It gives that movement that I need to create a brow. So, so far I've been really enjoying this. Now for the comeback. I know that you all have been hearing all over YouTube about the Naked Palette being back. I had recently thrown mine out because it was so old. It was unusable and I've been decluttering my makeup and just having what I actually use for every day and for my videos in my collection. So I went ahead and bought this because I wanted to see if the formula was different. From what I remember, this is different. It's creamier. It's just so beautiful. I love the formula. Now the shades I'm using today are Naked and Buck. I started shaping my eyes with the shade Naked because I felt that would be a perfect sort of mid-tone to create a look, but I wanted to darken it with Buck. Now, normally for every day, I would stop there or even maybe just use Naked over the lid and that's it. And that would be the end of the look. But I wanted to show you the different levels of look you could create all the way up to the smoky eye that I'm currently wearing. I went in with Sidecar on the mobile lid from about the middle of the eye to the inner corner to add some sparkle. And then I went in with Creep on the outside to create the smoky eye along with Gunmetal, the two deep shades at the end of the palette. 
but this is so gorgeous. Now, I did notice some fallout with the glitter with the sidecar, but I just sort of took my wedge sponge and brushed it away like this in the under eye. But I was wearing the palette yesterday, and I didn't notice any fallout as time went on. So we'll see at the end of the wear test if we have fallout from the glitter shade. Now, the glitter is so fine that I think it would work great on mature skin. I love it on my eyes now. I don't think my eyes look crepey at all on the lids, and I think they look pretty smooth. So we'll see at the end of the day how it looks. I'm using today this Essence pencil. It's called the Blended Line. The shade that I'm using is full of beans, and it reminded me so much of the look of the liners from Urban Decay. So we'll see if this is really long-lasting like they say. I have used other pencils from Essence, and I have had smudging during the day. So I'm curious, right now the heat is so much here in Florida and the humidity is so high. So I'll definitely be putting this to the test. I released a video about IT Cosmetics. If you haven't seen it, I think you really ought to because there are some real winners in that video. But one of the products I repurchased that I used a long time ago is this mascara. It's a three-in-one mascara. It's called their Tight Line. It's supposed to act as a tight liner, a primer, and a mascara all in one. It can do all three things. The brush on this is super tiny, and you can see it's at an angle. So I don't tight line because it can cause problems with your eyes. So what I do with this is I lay it right on the lash line on top. I do it underneath on the lash line, and then I go through the lashes with it. And it really is a great mascara. Well, a wonderful replacement I used to use is the Maybelline Lash Discovery. Now you can see the brush is bigger, and you could bend the wand. You could just stick it like this and bend it yourself so that you get the same bent wand as you do with the It. But you can also lay this on the lashes, go underneath and go through the lashes. So on the right, I have, on my right eye, I have the Maybelline Lash Discovery today. On the left eye, I did the It Tight Line. So I think they both look equally good. It was a little bit easier to use the It one because it's tiny, but for certain things, it was easier to use this. I found coating the lashes and grabbing the lashes was easier with the Maybelline. So we'll see which one we think works the best. Today I decided to try a primer from Pretty Smart. This is their Diffusing Face Primer. They had two to choose from. I chose this one because I was looking for that more diffused look on my skin to see if it would diffuse pores. It has a very luminous finish to it. I don't really feel like this is going to make my makeup last longer, but maybe it would help with application. I, from trying this today, feel like it would work great under a foundation that isn't very luminous already, something that's matte or a satin finish. Today, the one I'm using is pretty luminous, so I could have probably done without this but I wanted to give it a try, and I do like the way it looks on my skin. For the foundation today, I'm using this one from Hourglass. It's brand new, and of all the higher-end makeup brands that I've talked about, I've gotten the most questions from all of you about Hourglass. So I went ahead and sprung for this. It is not cheap. It is $49 for this tube, and it doesn't feel like there's that much product. Let's see. It's got 1.1 ounce in it. And the way it was said on the their website was to press it into the skin, start applying it with your fingers in the center of the face and work out to the edges by pressing it in. So that's what I did today. It's an all day sheer veil of coverage. That's the way they describe it. It's got squalene in it. It's got meadow foam seed oil. 
and it's supposed to keep your skin hydrated all day. Now, I'm not having a big problem with that right now because it's summer. It is hot here in Florida. The humidity is so high. Even when I wear a more matte foundation, what happens is that it looks dewier. So I've been able to get away with drier formulas now in the summer, but we'll see. This is supposed to boost your moisture level 52%. I'm in the shade number 10, medium with neutral undertones. I do feel like my skin looks very luminous, almost too much. Normally, I would apply a powder on top of this, but I want to see how it will look at the end of the day. Will it hold up without a powder? We'll see. But I think it's very pretty on my skin. I think my skin looks very natural. It doesn't look like I have any foundation on. It just takes care of all of the redness and discoloration that I have. So, so far, I really like it. But for this high price tag, this better be some good stuff. The colors aren't the same, but I wanted to do a wear test on the new blush from ColourPop. This is their Weightless Liquid Blush, and I bought the shade Super Shy. Now, like I said, the shades aren't the same, but this is from Hourglass. It's their Unreal Liquid Blush. I put it on this side, and I can tell you right away, I felt like it was easier to work with the Hourglass, that maybe the color pop was a little patchy, but it wasn't bad or anything. And I really want to see how they look at the end of the day. They both have a little bit of a different texture. The color pop comes out a little bit thicker and the hourglass is runnier, much more so like my Daniel Sandler I've talked about for years on my channel. Now, one thing I didn't realize until I read about the product more, I was having so much trouble getting this out. There's a little button on the bottom and you just push that and it dispenses a drop and you need so little. All you will need is one drop because this is so pigmented. For highlighter today, I chose this one from Essence, their Magic Filter Glow Booster. And I do love the way this looks on the skin. It's a nice formula. You know, there's been so many of these, you probably already have one in your collection, so I don't know if it's worth it for you to buy another one. But I do love this. I think it's at least equally as good as the one from e.l.f. It left a nice natural glow to my skin. It doesn't look uh, glittery or anything like that. So I do think this is a great product for wear mature skin. If you're looking for one or you're about to run out of your one from e.l.f., I like that it doesn't have a doe foot applicator, that it actually just squeezes out of the pump. So I am really impressed so far. We'll see how this goes. For lips today, I put on one of my all-time favorite lipsticks. This is from Maybelline. I bought a new shade. The shade I bought is Achieve It All. This is such a gorgeous nude. I was looking for a nude that would not wash me out, and I feel like this doesn't, that it's really beautiful looking. I'm also testing out today the Ulta Beauty Plumped Up Pout. This is a brand new product they've come out with. They've come out with a whole new line. So I would love to know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing more products from this line. In the past, there hasn't really been much interest on my channel about Ulta Beauty and their actual products. I've talked about them and the response has been very lackluster. So I didn't go out and purchase everything because I didn't know if you'd really even be interested. So let me know in the comments, but I did grab this. This particular gloss is interesting because it comes out smelling like strawberry. I bought the shade Strawberry Shortcake, and it smells like that initially, but that goes away like in a New York minute. The next minute, you feel hot cinnamon on your lips. Remember the little red cinnamon candies that maybe your mom put on cookies 
or you ate. I remember those. My mom loved them. Well, that's how my lips feel right now, just like one of those cinnamon candies. And I know so many women do not like that. They don't want that hot feel on their lips. And this has been going strong. Since I put this on, I am still feeling this. And I did apply this yesterday, and I had that same experience for an extended amount of time. So I don't know that my lips look any bigger. I really don't think they do, but this definitely has a beautiful shine to it. It was very goopy when I took it out. When I took the product out, there's strings. Maybe you can see that string. And I know a lot of people would not like that. So, so far, I love the look. I don't really like how it comes out of the product. And I'm not a huge fan of my lips feeling so hot for so long. So we'll see how I feel at the end of the day. Right now, it's 8.04 in the morning. I have an appointment. I'll be out running errands. I have lots of things to do today. I'm going to be doing some fitness. So we'll see. For me right now, the makeup's a little shiny. I would normally powder but at the same time, I want you to see how this will look at the end of the day. So I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to put any powder or setting spray on. And we'll see how the makeup does. It's 514 in the evening. Let's do a run through of how everything held up. First, let's talk about the lipstick. I have reapplied that. It does last great. This is one of my favorite lipsticks. It's super affordable. I would say that this particular shade does not stain my lips like some of them do because it's a lighter nude, but I definitely think this is a winner. I'm thrilled that I bought it. I have so many of these in this line and they never disappoint. Let's talk about the Hourglass Hydrating Skin Tint. I think it looks nice but I don't know that it looks $49 nice. The price tag on this would keep me from repurchasing. It doesn't mean it's a bad product. I think it's still held up. Now I can see, you know, my broken capillaries here on my nose. Some of it has worn off the nose. I even see some of it has worn off my cheeks. I did regular things today. I did some work in the house. I did go out some, but not. I wasn't outside as much as I usually am. So it should have held up well. And I do see some of it breaking down. I see discoloration in my cheeks. And I have drugstore foundation that I talk about all the time like the Catrice uh, that I rave about, their serum, their HD foundation, and that's around a $10 price point. So this is almost like five times as much for this. So for me, I won't repurchase. The eye primer from Pretty Smart, so far I'm in love with it. I will update you on this because I've only applied it this one time, but my shadows, look at them. They stayed so beautifully. I like that this is so thin. Again, some people wouldn't be happy with this because it doesn't cover anything. It doesn't cover purple in the eyes or any kind of discoloration. I don't really look for that always. And it's so thin that I really think it works great on mature eyes. My brow pencil for Merit. I think my brows look great. The tail's still in place. I always look for that because the tail tends to wear off my brows. So you can see it's still in place really well. So I'm happy with that. They look about the same to me as when I put it on this morning. So I'm very happy with this purchase. Now let's talk about the eyeshadow. I have to say, I'm in love. If you loved the original Naked palette, I think you're going to be thrilled with this. I feel like the formula is better. It just blended beautifully, and I didn't even use the nice brush that comes with it because I didn't wash it yet. In the eyeshadows, they have just a great brush that I love. I love the last one that came with the palette. So I feel it's worth it. It was a high price tag. I paid $59 for the palette. But let me tell you, if they took all my palettes away and said, 
you just get to keep the Naked palette, I would be happy. Let's talk about the primer. I'm always on the fence with these primers. There's a few that I feel really make a difference in my skin. And this did look pretty on my skin, their diffusing primer, but I don't feel that it really made any big difference in my pores. I still see my pores. I don't feel that like it disguised my fine lines, anything like that. So I almost feel like it was an unnecessary step especially because the hourglass has some luminosity to it. So I really don't think I needed this. Now it would work great under matte uh, foundations that I have, so I'm not disappointed that I have it. I will still use it. But was it really necessary? I don't think so. This one, if you're looking for something that will make your skin look more luminous, then I think you'll love it. If not, you could skip it. If you enjoy honest makeup reviews, most of what I review is drugstore, but I also review some mid-priced makeup, then hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And thanks to all of you that have been a part of my channel for a very long time. So on this side, remember, I have the It Tight Line. I love this product, but it's pricier. On this side, I had the Lash Discovery from Maybelline. I can't really see a difference. You look and you tell me if you see a difference. I can't really tell the two apart. So the price point on these is so different. This is $27. This I know is can't be more than maybe $7. So I would say save your money, even though I think this is a great product, there's nothing wrong with it, and buy the Lash Discovery, unless you really feel the smaller brush would help you. I feel like for some people that have very small eyes, this could be a game changer. My oldest daughter is one of them. She has very tiny eyes, and her wearing mascara is so difficult. So for her, I think this could be just life-changing, this tiny wand like this. If your eyes are a little larger and you can tolerate this size of wand, getting it into the tight line area and above the lashes, then I say go for the lash discovery and save yourself some money. I am loving the liner. I think it's great. Essence hit a home run with this. It's super affordable. It looks like it was right out of Urban Decay. So I give this a high mark. Now let's talk about blush. Remember on this side, I have the ColourPop and also these shades were not the same. I wanted to mention that too. I'm not saying these are shade dupes by any means. So on this side, I had the ColourPop and on this side, I had the hourglass. Sometimes with the lighting in the filming room, it's a little hard for me to see, and I'm looking in a viewfinder to look. But I feel like they both sort of ended up looking the same, and I don't see a lot of difference. Now, I do see some of it collecting up here in the hairline where it didn't wear off. And over here, I see sort of the same kind of thing. I don't see a huge difference in the way it looks after all these hours between the ColourPop and the Hourglass. Now, I also want to say I have other liquid foundations I feel last better. I've done wear tests on others that I feel give me a better look at the end of the day. They're still there more vibrantly. I would also say that my Daniel Sandler lasts longer than the Hourglass. These are uh, more comparable as far as price. The Daniel Sandler is even a little lower in price. I think most of the ones I've bought have been around the $25 price point, and this is higher than that. So I am really not happy with the Hourglass for the longevity of it. I think it's a beautiful product. I felt like it went on more beautifully than the ColourPop at the beginning. If you're looking for longevity, 
then I don't think Hourglass is going to do it. I think it just doesn't last as well on the skin as others I've tried. Let's talk about the Plumped Pout from Ulta Beauty. I'm so torn about this because I love the look, but I don't like how goopy it is. When you open it, it comes out very stringy, and I've tried a few times. Look at that long string. I just don't buy lip glosses that come out stringy. So even though I like the formula, I also was not a fan of the cinnamon on my lips. It just felt uncomfortable. So I have to give this a pass. Well, all in all, we found some great products, but a few that didn't work. I was surprised. I thought the hourglass would look a little bit better on my skin and last longer than my drugstore. It didn't. I was surprised with the hourglass because I did a blush ranking video that I haven't put out yet and I'm going to have to change that because I had ranked it high. It looked nice on my skin initially, but you can see in the wear test a lot of it wore off. So this I don't think is worth the money. And um, I'm not surprised about the brow product from Merit. I've bought it from them before and I really like their brows. But I'm most surprised that the Naked Palette is back and better than ever. I didn't expect to love it even more than I did before. So I guess that was the surprise of the video. I appreciate you so much. Let me know in the comments which product was your favorite, or maybe you have a different opinion than mine. Maybe you've tried some of these products and they've worked for you. I'm only one person, so I love hearing your feedback. All of the links for everything I used today are in the description of the video. Thank you so much for all of your kindness, supporting my channel. Love you all so much.